The Lord be with you. <clears throat> Good morning to you and congratulations for remembering to set your clocks ahead. Isn't it wonderful to be, thank God it's sunny. <laughs> I had visions of it being very dark in here and all of us just kind of fighting sleep all morning, but I think we're going to make it. So um, it's always a joy to be gathered together in worship and um, especially on one of these mornings when I think, is it going to be me in the choir? Is it just going to be us? So we're glad to have you here. Um, we are, this is the first Sunday in Lent, and um, we are doing, starting a, a, a worship series, and we're going to be doing things a little differently. Um, you notice there's a chair here. I'm going to be leading a time of um, uh, kind of the, the prayer of confession and, and uh uh, assurance and also joys and concerns, petitions from the chair after the sermon. Um, there's a few other things that might be a little bit different. We're going to pass the piece this morning right after the, the call for worship. So I, I, I invite you to just kind of roll with it. Um, we're, gonna, we're all going to be okay, including me, because I'm definitely a creature of habit here. So uh, just, it'll, it'll be okay. There's also a few um, activities for you to do. Uh, you notice there's a lovely pink and whoops, pink and purple shoe box here. This is a God box that we're going to be using for the series. And the idea is that um, so in your pews in front of you in the in the racks with the hymnals and the Bibles, there are purple pieces of paper and yellow pieces of paper, goldenrod, I believe, is the official color. Um, you are invited right now or at, at another point in the service just to discern what you would like to write on these. We're trying to let go of the things that burden us, and so you're invited to write on this, the things that you are worried about, the things that are heavy on you, and to let go of them by placing them into God's care. Just, it's a ritual, right? It's a, it's a symbolic action to kind of help us get there. Um, if... Know that I, what I'm planning to do is to come in here during the week and uh, pray for these things. I am not God, but I can pray for them, right? Let's be clear. We are handing them over to God, but I will pray for them. And, um, and, and so if you don't want, if it's something that is so heavy and so private that you don't even want me to see that, that is, that is okay. And so you can just put in a blank piece of paper. God knows, right? So... Um, I invite you to put, put uh, things to pray for in there. And then on the yellow pieces of paper, instead of having the time where we pop up and share joys and concerns, I'm going to invite you to write what you want uh, to have shared, and we'll just take them out and read them um, during the time of petition. So it can be a joy or concern. Please use your best penmanship <laughs> so that I can read them. I was a teacher at one time, so I'm pretty good, but... Uh, the best we can do would be great. So, and uh, and I'm going to recruit Paul to help me collect those. We'll kind of wander through the uh, congregation at one point to collect those. But um, there will be a song where you're invited to come forward with um, your your petitions. So, it's our first Sunday running through this, so we'll get it by the end of Lent. Um, do we have? Uh, do we have some, I think one announcement that we want to be sure we mention is <laughs> uh, on Wednesday, March 20th, during spring break, the McAllister College Choir, of which Rory McCollum is one of the singers, is going to be doing a concert here uh, at 7 o'clock. Um, Beth and I were just laughing before the service because we're waiting to hear more, and we haven't, but it'll be great. Right? It'll be great. College choirs are fun. So we invite you, if, you, if uh, you're around for spring break, to come and, um, come and hear the choir. So it's 7 o'clock. There. That's, 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 that sounds good. That'll, that'll do for now. Um, let's see. Are there, are there other things we need to announce this morning of things that are going on? I think we're good. We, so this is one thing that is really different. Is uh, we're going to do... The, the March birthday recognition, which we do on the second Sunday of each month, is a, of that month's birthdays. March birthdays. 
Come on down. We're going to start the service with our recognition of March birthdays. I know. I know. I know. This is hard. Yes. Yes, Roger. Oh, yeah. Having Adult Forum again this morning, and it's a wonderful program on understanding Jesus' compassion and the ministry of Jesus. Okay. Nice little video and short discussion. Very good. Roger, who's usually a tenor, is speaking bass after an illness. Yeah. Oh, bless. Okay, March birthdays. We've got one brave March birth. Oh, good. We've got a few. A few brave ones. So you can get up and stretch. That's good. Are you going to be here? Okay, excellent. Excellent. All right. So, yep, just make a line. And what we'll do is I'll hand you the microphone. We'll pass it down. You tell us your name and the date of your birthday. And if you want to tell us how old you will be or turned, that is up to you. And um, Okay, we're going we're gonna to sing. Happy birthday, dear friends. Happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, happy birthday dear friends, happy birthday to you. Okay, since we're doing it at the beginning, I forgot to say, I can't remember if I say it before or after this, but this is my joy and privilege to tell you on behalf of the congregation how glad we are that you were born How glad we are that God created you to be the people that you are and gave you the different gifts and abilities that you have and your personalities and all of it and the way that you share them with this congregation, with the community, with your family, with your friends, and that the world is a better place because each of you is in it. So we thank God for you. All right. And now you can see. I I think I usually do that before we sing, don't I? Okay, well... Or, eh, we're all a little bit off today. Okay, is there, is there any, any other, uh, anything else we've forgotten before we get started? So I just have a little, a little something for us. Can you hear that? I'm putting it close to the microphone. Hear it. Does it make you? Does it make you anxious at all to hear the clicking of ticking of the clock? Um, I think it's it's a uh, it's kind of funny to start this series on a day, a morning in which we have just lost an hour, right? We just lost an hour, and um, I know by the end of the day, I'm going to really wish that I had that hour back. All right? It's just you know, it's just. It's just a metaphor for our our lives, I think, right now. We live in such a busy world, uh, fast-paced society, right? Things are moving so fast. Gotta gotta pay attention or you might might miss out on something. Um, And we live in a world in which our, it feels like our worth, our, the meaning of us is all tied up in what we accomplish, Right, what we what we rack up uh, in terms of our productivity, in terms of what we have, in terms of you know what we own, where we live, all of those things, right? Are they, it, and all of that busyness, all of that seeking after more, uh, that not enough, it comes at a price. It comes at a price, right? It comes at the price. Of our, of our souls. So what does, you know, what does this cost us? What does it cost our communities? What does it cost our relationships and our personal well-being to be so busy? The season of Lent is traditionally a time um, when we're encouraged to give something up, right? And, and so often that, uh, that tradition of giving something up, which has been around for centuries, was tied up in uh, kind of a, a suffering or a, or a penitence, a punishment, right? And, but what we are going to do, we're going to invite some giving up during this season of Lent. But we want to move it towards more an idea of making room of making room for God, of making room for 
quiet where we can connect with God. And uh, and in doing so, and it's really an act of self-care, right? In doing that, in taking the time, in making room, we will have more spiritual and energetic reserves. In order to make more room, we are going to focus on decluttering and lightening up our lives, not like Marie Kondo, (laughs) decluttering in other ways. And this week we're going to focus on finding the rhythms of life that feed us, finding just the right tempo. Come and find the quiet center in the crowded lives we lead. Find the room for hope to enter. Find the frame where we are free. as we usually do I want to invite you to take a breath take more than one breathe deeply and if you have a watch I can invite you to take it off because we don't know what time it is anyway and put it away and if you have a phone I brought a phone in this morning. Let's turn it off. Let me think about that. I, I have to, friends, I have to think about how to turn off my phone. How sad is that? That I have to think about how to turn off my phone. Oh, good, I remembered. Turn off phones. And if it makes you a little anxious to put those things away, that's okay. We're just, this is part of the decluttering process and the turning off and making room that we're going to work on. We're going to try to make this next hour or so, and I will keep my watch on so I know what time it is, and I won't go too long. But we're going to give ourselves a break. These are just some simple acts, or maybe not so simple. I don't know if they're hard for you, and if if they are, that's okay. (laughs) And that is okay. That is okay. (laughs) We, there is grace here, right? This is something we are living into. We have, the, we have six weeks to learn how to turn off our phones. <laughs> Thank you for Lent, oh Lord. But we're going to take this time to give ourselves a break. To give ourselves just an hour to catch our breath. To give ourselves time. To give God our attention. Let us pray a prayer for clearing out. Spacious God, we come today hoping for tools to sweep away the stress. Let us us make make room room for for you. you. Nudge us in this time of worship to seek the things that really matter. Let Let us us find room room for for you. Help us to claim our own selves as a holy sanctuary where you dwell. Let Let us us be be room for for you. you. In the name of Jesus, who invites us to wholeness. Amen.
As Christ has filled our hearts with peace, let us share that peace with one another. The peace of Christ be with you. And also with you. I invite any other children who want to come forward to join us up front for discovery time to do so right now. Ooh. Miss Emery. Is that? Good morning, friends. How are you? Good. Um, we have a chair, a rocking chair here in the sanctuary. It wasn't there last week. It's a little different, isn't it? Do you guys, do you guys like rocking chairs? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Did you, um, do you ever, do you, ha- do you have one at your house? Does anybody have one at your house? And then, of course, we have two rocking chairs back there. Does anybody like to sit in those rocking chairs? Uh, I like to sit, yeah. Teddy loves to sit in those rocking chairs. There's times, I think, when we've had, you know, you have to get here early to be able to sit in a rocking chair sometimes. They're that popular. Um, we actually have three rocking chairs at our house. We like them so much. Um, do you sit in a rocking chair by yourself and rock? Do you, and sometimes you sit with... Maybe mom and dad, mom or dad. You can't have everybody in a rocking chair, can you? (laughs) That's a little hard. But uh, what, yeah, it's a place to kind of feel, I don't know, calm and, how does it feel when you're in a rocking chair? How does it make you feel? Relaxed, yeah, it can make you relaxed and kind of comforted. You know what it reminds me of? And Ellie's Ellie's kind of doing that right now with the baby doll, but... uh, you know, you're rocking. Yeah, you're soothed, aren't you? Yeah, when you, when, uh, um, it's one of those things when you're a baby, you, you don't remember it, but the parents do, don't you? When you, when you rock a baby, when you rock a baby and, uh, you just hold, hold somebody you love close to you and rock. And it's, um, it's a, it's a, it's a beautiful thing to do that, I think. Um, it's, it's one of those, um, it's one of the joys of parenting, one of the best times of parenting, I would say, to, to hold somebody like that and, be, and rock them. I know I, what I remember is being at my grandmother's house and um, sitting on her lap and having her rock me. Sometimes we'd read a book and we'd rock, and sometimes I would just sit with grandma and rock. Anybody done that before? It's a great thing. It's a beautiful thing. So one time, I was at a class on prayer, and they invited us. It was a way, they were inviting us to try a a kind of prayer where you just, um, there's no words to say, but you're just sitting and trying to be in the presence of God. And they suggested that we think of a time when we felt really loved. And, held, and cared for. And what came to mind for me was sitting with my grandmother in a rocking chair, being held and, you know, being soothed and, you know, going back, rocking back and forth and just feeling completely loved and cared for. And they said, that's what it's like to be loved and held in God's care, is that memory that you have of when you felt really, really loved and cared for. And so <clears throat> that's part of the reason that we have a rocking chair up front is to, um, to remind us of um, that, that God really wants us to have those times when we feel relaxed and we feel soothed um, and, and, and get away from, from our worries and that we you know, feel like we are in God's presence. So that's, that's why there is a rocking chair up here. So I'd invite you to do the same thing that this, and and maybe that's not, maybe a rocking chair isn't quite that for you, and that is okay, but maybe there's some other place or um, experience you've had where you just felt completely loved and completely cared for, and maybe it's holding your own baby doll, right? Uh, And that is, that is a moment where we get get a glimpse of what it's like to be loved by God, how much God loves us, and what that can feel like. 
So I invite you to think of those times and then maybe find a place in your house where you like to sit and be quiet and uh, maybe spend a little more time there during, during the next few weeks as we get ready for Easter. Okay, do you ever, you ever have times when you need to just kind of get away from everybody when you choose not because you've been put in a timeout chair? Has anybody been put in a timeout chair before? <laughs> I think those are going out of vogue, aren't they? I would think we're not. But uh, where we just need a time out to kind of sit and, and be. Yeah. Okay. Well, um, let's say we're going to close with our, with, our, with our pretzel prayer. where we So we take our right hand and put it on the opposite shoulder. Just basically take your hands and put them on opposite shoulders. So you can kind of give yourself a hug in a way. That's a good idea. Just give ourselves a hug. And we will say, you can repeat after me. Thank you for the world so sweet. Thank you for the world so sweet. Thank you for the friends we meet. Thank you for the friends we meet. Thank you for the birds that sing. Thank you for the birds that sing. Thank you, God, for everything. Thank you, God, for everything. All right. You can go back to your seats. Our, um, our child care person, Elena, is on spring break today. So there is not anyone in the nursery. But you're welcome to stay here. (laughs) And the word was with God, and the word was God. Thanks be to God. Thank mm-hmm. you.
Will you pray with me? May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. O God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. So I want to I want to start with something interesting that I read this week. I'll be curious to know if this sounds familiar to any of you. So in 1967, experts in time management made uh, a, delivered a report to the United States Senate. These experts believed the speed of technology, satellites, and robotics would present a big problem for the American workplace in the years to come. And what was the problem? People would have too much free time. (laughs) Here's what they concluded, and I quote, by 1985, people might have to choose (laughs) between working 22 hours a week 27 weeks a year, or retiring at 38. Three more years, Shane. Three more years. Hold on, man. Is that not hilarious? Do you remember hearing about this at all? My, um, my parents, I remember my dad, my dad telling me that. Yeah, they thought we were going to work four days a week when we got older. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> Got it a little bit backwards, right? Technology has continued to develop with cell phones and tablets and Wi-Fi and unlimited data streaming, and we are connected and available almost everywhere all the time. That does not lead to free time, does it? It experiences a it means we've experienced a revolution in productivity, and we've also experienced the downside of being accessible nearly every hour of every day. Our personal uh, devices make distractions incredibly easy. Scrolling on Facebook. Posting on Instagram or Snapchat. Playing the latest games. Streaming seemingly endless amounts of television or movies. Do you remember when our favorite TV show was on once a week? When the networks told us it was going to be not like, hey, here's a TV show and there's two series for you of 12, you know, when do you go to bed? Stay up and watch. We can shop whenever we want. Whenever we want. And we can buy nearly anything that we desire online as long as we can afford it or, I don't know, maybe just wait for the credit card company to figure out we can't. We have at our fingertips an endless amount of information and entertainment. And the means of keeping us accessible to family, friends, and work 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And as helpful as that sometimes is, I always watch old movies, and when they get into a situation, I'm like, you know, if you could have made a phone call, this whole plot line would have been avoided, right? But it's not that way anymore. So it is useful at times, but it can also feel like a terrible burden, right? And, and, and there's the constant stream of news. Most of it is bad, it seems, right? And an opinion and other things that are clamoring for our attention. And it's not just our screens that keep us busy. Um, adults are busy and so are children. Parents and grandparents know this. There are so many activities to keep kids busy, to make them smarter, to hone their artistic talents and athletic ability to enrich their lives, right? So that translates into more activities for parents and grandparents to chauffeur children to and from and to attend. And there are so many things to do in this town (laughs) and in Iowa City and Cedar Rapids all the time. Have you noticed this? There are concerts happening, performances, lectures, community events happening all the time. There is, it seems like there's never a time when there's not something to do and it is easy to experience FOMO. Have you ever heard of FOMO? Fear of missing out. FOMO. We are busy. It can feel hard to keep up with everything. Social media invites comparison. We get this peek into other people's lives and see how we measure up. But of course, the problem is that with social media, everybody gets to carefully curate their lives and put out there the best and happiest moments, the great successes, the shiny lives, right, that we all wish we had. 
but we don't all the time. And occasionally there is honesty out there in space where people can tell the truth to one another, but a lot of the times you're just looking at a false face from somebody else. And, and while you're doing that, you can also get advertisements for webinars and programs that promise to help you maximize your productivity and your exercise routine, and they can minimize the clutter in your home, and they will uh, minimize the pores in your complexion, and they will make your parenting stress-free. It's all there for us, friends, right on that phone. And I didn't even talk about work. No wonder we feel tired. No wonder we can feel like we're not enough, that we're not doing enough. No wonder we find ourselves wondering, isn't there, isn't there another way to live? So into this comes these words from Matthew 11. Come to me, all you who are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Ah, oh, I don't know about you, but I am sometimes weary. And rest for my soul, that sounds wonderful. The yoke, I have to admit, sounds less appealing. All right, we're Iowans. We have a pretty good idea about yokes, right? We, a wooden collar that was placed across the head and the shoulders of a pair of oxen, right? So that they could pull the wagon or the plow or whatever farm implement was being used at the time. That, that does not sound like fun to me, but, but that's okay. Let's, let's, let's go with the metaphor here. Our translation says my yoke is easy, but the word that's translated is easy. The Greek word for that is krestos, and a better translation, translation is well-fitting. My yoke is well-fitting, and, uh, you know, that makes sense, right? If you want a team of oxen to work, they better have a, they better have a well-fitting, fairly comfortable yoke right, that doesn't rub uncomfortably or make sores because then they're not going to keep working. So how about this? Jesus' yoke is well-fitting. What God asks of each of us is based on who each of us is, on how we have been uniquely made and gifted. There is a right fit, a right tempo for each of us. And, and I should say, too, I think this is really important because we often get this confused. We want to divide everything into sacred and secular. Uh, when we talk about the yoke that, that Jesus gives to us, that's not just about our spiritual lives. It's about our whole life, our work, our family, our friends, our community, our church, our, 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 our involvement, our service, our self-care. This is all part of God's calling on our lives. It is all part of the yoke, the well-fitting yoke that God intends for us. So how do, we, how do we figure it out? Well, sometimes it's easy to figure out what is well-fitting. I mean, for example, when our family got a dog a few years ago and that dog was anxious to get up when the sun got up and go for a walk... Uh, it was pretty obvious that I was going to be the one to do that because I am the early riser. Asking my husband, Jim, who likes to stay up late and sleep in, to do that task would be badly fitting. Right? That would not, it would have been cruel. It would have been cruel. Um, but the job fits me well, and indeed, our, my early morning walks with Russo are one of the, my favorite times of the day. But that's an easy example. That's an easy example. How about the 101 other things? that are pulling at us. Well, I think it's always a good idea to look to Jesus. So Jesus was a busy guy, right? People followed him. People asked him to help them, to heal them or someone they loved, to solve a problem, 
to answer a question. Crowds found him everywhere he went. Some people adored him and others were wanting to test him and to get him into trouble, to trip him up. Uh, It had to be exhausting. So how did Jesus deal with this busyness? I think we can often skip over these these parts of the reading because there's not action in them. But the Gospels tell us that Jesus went off by himself to a quiet place to pray, to spend time with God, his Father, his Abba. And I suspect it happened far more often than it gets mentioned in Matthew, Mark, and Luke. That it was such an ordinary occurrence, it was hardly worth writing down. We can be certain that it was these times of prayer, of connecting with God, of plugging into the source, into the spirit, of recharging the batteries, right? That guided Jesus in all that he said, in all that he did, in how and who he was. So if Jesus needed to do it, we need to do it too. It is in silence that we learn to listen better. It is in solitude that we learn how to be with others. And it is in stillness that we discern right action. I cannot tell you the right tempo for you, right? We're all made differently. Some of, you know, we all know people who are just accomplish an amazing amount without breaking a sweat, right? But not all of us are those people. So each of us, created individually, uniquely, are going to have the, our own tempo that's right for us. So that's the first thing that we need to acknowledge. We don't have to be like everybody else. We need to be who God made us to be, to do what God made us to do. I cannot tell you what the right tempo is for you, but the Holy Spirit can. And the only way to find that out, friends, the thing that is required of us is to place ourselves into God's care. We do that by getting away by ourselves to pray. Doesn't mean we have to go to a mountaintop just means we need to carve time out, and that can seem like a huge thing, right? You know, maybe getting up 15 minutes early, and that's hard when you're thinking, man, I am barely getting enough sleep as it is. But this is the thing that puts everything else in place, finding the time to get away and say, God, I cannot do this anymore. Help me, help me, help me. I am listening, Lord. Take up some sort of prayer practice, even if it's just 10 minutes a day. It will make all the difference for you. It is in silence that we learn to listen. It is in solitude that we learn to be with others. It is in stillness that we discern right action. But we have to take that step Carol Daly and I were talking about this, this, this uh, saying. It's, it's both attributed to Christians and, and, and uh, yoga, and I've also seen it attributed to, um, to in Judaism and Islam, that when we take one step toward God, God takes whatever divine takes 10 steps or 100 steps or 1,000 steps toward us. But it does take us. It does take us taking a step toward God, moving toward God so that God can move in us and make all that difference. When we make time, when we make time to rest in God, God more easily and fully lives in us and we can more easily and fully, it won't make everything better, but it will make life better. We can find the right tempo. We can find that well-fitting yoke to live the lives that God calls us to live. So friends, go out into the world this week to find that quiet place and time for you. And listen for how God wants to help you find that right tempo for your life. Amen.
been looking forward to this all week. I have to say, is anybody a little envious that I get a time out in the rocking chair? You know, uh, other parents, grandparents familiar with the timeout chair? Did anybody else do that? It did not really work very well for us. Uh, you know, in that, it became such a punishment. So I, I'm imagining the children out there when I talk about a timeout chair going, ooh, no, I don't want to do that. But, um, you know, the idea is what we all know is that we, uh, we need a break sometimes, right? We need to take a break from the intensity of, uh, of life, and also sometimes we need, a, we need a break from other people, even the people we love the most, right? We've got to have our own space and our own time to um, just, just, just get, gain some perspective, kind of stop any of this kind of stuff that's happening in us, get some perspective, and... Um, maybe figure out a new course of action, a new way of doing things. So as part of this Lenten series, we are going to give ourselves a time out and we are sending ourselves to the prayer chair. So yeah, we won't call this the time out chair, we'll call it the prayer chair. How about that? So this is a time when we um, are invited to let go of the things that we do not need that are weighing us down. Uh, This is in the, the... in a usual order of service, this, these times are known as, as confession, the time of confessions, confession or reconciliation, and then assurance, and then the, the time of petition, the sharing of joys and concerns. And these are three ways, three important ways, right, of, of reconnecting with God. They are ancient, and they make sense. In confession, we let go of regret about the past, we unburden our hearts of the things that can truly weigh us down, right? We, know, we all know what that feels like, the things that we hold inside sometimes and they just feel like they are weighing us down. And when, you, when we speak them out loud to another person, it can be a real sense of release and relief. And then we remember the promise and assurance that God will never abandon us no matter what, that we are, nothing can separate us from God's love for us. And then in petitions, we, let, we, try, we try to let go of worry about the things we cannot control and worry about the future and give it all to the loving God who holds us all close. So my hope for you is that um, you will designate a, a prayer chair at home. Um, I have not a prayer chair, but a corner of the, of the sofa that is mine from about 5.45 to 6.15 in the morning. <laughs> um, but just, just some place where you can have a time out with God. And I would also say that for some people who are really active, it might be the walk. It might be going for a walk or a run. That's okay too. My way doesn't have to be your way. Whatever it is, wherever you feel that release and feeling in the presence of God right? That's, that is the important and critical thing. So however we are able to let go, to remember that you are in God's presence and ask God to hold close thing, the things and the people that you hold dear. So you're all silent right now, but we'll just be more deliberate about that. And I invite you also to um, take a deep breath, maybe close your eyes. And um, Try to sit in silence. That's so hard. Maybe, maybe listen to the intake and outtake of your breath. I mean, our brains are just a constant stream of thinking. So it's okay if your thoughts won't quiet down. It really is okay. But find a certain amount of stillness. Pay attention maybe to your feet on the floor, your, your, the heaviness of your body in the seat your breath and remember that this stillness that your being your simply being is enough
Oh God, for the times when we have run ourselves and others ragged, forgive us. For the times when we have asked of ourselves too much or too little, forgive us. Help us find the right tempos for the right times in our lives, O oh God. Help us to be gentle in our learning and our growing with ourselves and with others. Help us to step back when the toxic and overbearing pace of life threatens to tear down, to strip away the connections that we have to life, to love, to you. Give us eyes to see and hearts to recognize the other way of living that you offer to us. Oh God, in this moment we hear your promise. My yoke is easy, is well fitting, and my burden is light. You do not ask us to destroy ourselves in order to please you. We are your children, created by you with whom you are pleased, just because. I hope you feel some sense of release from those burdens and now we move into a time of prayers of petition as we let go of the worry about the things we cannot control and worry about the future and give it all to our loving God and trust and trusting our worries to the God who loves us so I invite you if you have not already done so to take purple piece of paper that is in the pews and write down the worries, the burdens that you are, are weighing you down now that you want to let go into God's care, to entrust into God's care that will be placed in the God box. And any petitions that you would like shared on the yellow piece of paper that we will read during the joys and concerns. So we're going to start singing. Um, the words are printed in the bulletin, but we will sing appropriately. Come bring your burdens to God. And as we do that, um, Paul and I will go throughout the congregation and collect your purple God box and yellow to be read out loud petition.
Let us pray. We bring our petitions to you this day, O God. Here are the people and things we are worried about and yet know that we cannot control. O God, we pray for Ann Cannon's father, Bill Rusi, as he recovers from pacemaker surgery in Huntington, Pennsylvania. We pray for Deanne Rexroden and family as they grieve the death of Deanne's mother, Shirley Teradash, last two weeks ago. We pray for the family and friends of Robbie Mudruk. We pray for Diane Clay and her recovery, for John Petrick, for Maggie Willems, for Dixie Mackey, for Don Huff, for Terry Kaplan's uh, sister, Patty. We pray for uh, Jennifer Rashid, Carl and Beth Reeker's niece, and sudden loss of eyesight and probable MS diagnosis. We uh, pray for... Um, We have, we have joys. We are thankful for my family, for our families. We offer uh, congratulations to Anthony Deibner Hansen, who had his first solo sculpture exhibition in Madison, Wisconsin this weekend. He's getting close to finishing his MFA, and so we offer you great thanks for all Anthony has done, and uh, blessings on... on finishing the MFA, and we uh, give thanks for Doug Hansen's mother, Alice, who will be 97 on March 14th. And we give thanks that uh, uh, Michael Lesmeyer, Maggie's brother, and his girlfriend, Nicole, recently became engaged and plan to marry in D.C. in the fall of 2020. And God, we pray too for um, Jay Gunn as he continues in hospice care and uh, just has some really good days and some really bad days. And just the difficulty of being out of control and uh, yeah, just not knowing how, how the road in front of him will run. May he be surrounded by your love and mercy and the love of others. Uh, all of these prayers, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And now, friends, together as a sign of our trust in the God who loves and cares for us, let us pray together the prayer that Jesus taught us to say. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, our offering is an act of worship in which we express our gratitude and reliance on God. As recipients of abundant life in Christ, we now offer our gifts to God.
Please join me in the prayer of dedication. Giver of every good and perfect gift, we marvel at your love and care for us and for all that you have made. Help us by your Holy Spirit to lift our hearts to you, to taste and see that you are good, and to live lives of abundant generosity, full of gratitude and grace, through Jesus our Lord. Amen. Friends, you have an invitation to do homework this week. You won't be graded on it, but you have an invitation to go home. If you don't already have one, choose your spot. It's going to be the place or the way that you carve out time with God during the next um, six weeks of Lent. Um, We do have devotionals that you can take with you. There's... um, This one, Awakening to God's Beauty, it's really lovely. There are pictures of green things in there. And it's it's really beautiful. Um, Based on the Psalms, I used it this last week and really liked it. There's some at the back there. There's some uh, in the corner pew there. There's one on the timeout chair. Help yourself. Um, There's also somewhere we cleaned up. I forgot to mention, we have these beautiful flowers that were given to us by... um, the, the Winder family, uh, Mark Winder's mother, Hazel Ann uh, Winder Thompson McChesney, McChesney Winder Thompson, um, died and we had her service here yesterday and they, they left those for us. So um, we remember her. What? Let's see, where was I going after that? We, uh, so anyway, we cleared things out and I can't remember where I put the other devotional, but I will go look for it. <laughs> and uh, it's based on the series and um, I will post some of the prayers on the Facebook page, the church Facebook page, and on the website, so they will be available um, there. So, and, and maybe think about having your own God box at home. We have painted an empty t- tissue box, and um, I confess to you that I have thought about writing things down and putting them in the box. I haven't done that yet, but I'm going to. I'm going to today. So see, it's all a work in process. We have six weeks to get into the Lenten groove, so... And now I invite you to hear this blessing for an unhurried life. 
let's take a breath and let it out again. Friends, may the tempo of your journey be just right. May you seize the day, but also savor the moment. May your life be the one you live and not just watch passing by. And may you be reacquainted each day with an unhurried God who is calling you to dive deeply into love. Amen.